What do the following people have in common? Argentina's left-wing former leader Cristina Kirchner and U.S. President-elect Donald Trump, French far-right leader Marine Le Pen, and Beppe Grillo, the leader of Italy's Five Star Movement, Hugo Chavez, former leftist leader of Venezuela, and British UKIP leader Nigel Farage. All have been described as populists. So what is it that unites such a diverse group? It's not their policies or political programs, which range from nationalization to pro-business tax cuts, from a large role for the state to radical limits on government intervention. Rather, what unites them is their approach to governance and the nature of their appeal to voters. As Jan Werner Mueller puts it, the hallmark of this approach is that there is a real people as defined by the populist. Only he faithfully represents them and everyone else can and indeed should be excluded. Donald Trump did not just attack the Washington elite, he also built alliances with white nationalists. For Le Pen and Farage, the enemy is the European Union, with its cosmopolitan commitment to free movement of all citizens. For leftist populists, the enemy is big business and its global ally and avatar, the United States. Populists become popular by focusing on issues that matter to large parts of the population, but that political elites have avoided. Immigration is one, the loss of manufacturing jobs is another. In focusing on real problems, however, populists use emotional rather than rational arguments, cherry-picking facts or inventing them altogether. They advance a politics of exclusion and blame that claims to speak for the silent majority. Once in power, populists typically fail to advance their voters' interests and often make matters worse. It is at this point, as we have seen in Hungary under Viktor Orban, in Poland under Jaroslav Kaczynski, and in Venezuela, under Chavez's successor, Nicolás Maduro, that the threat of dictatorship looms.